And uh, yeah, welcome to my talk about dependence logic with a majority quantifier. And uh, this is a uh, joint work with uh, uh, Arnaud Durand, Juha Kontinen, and Heribert Frömer. At first, I will give you an introduction about dependence logic, and I will also give um, a notion of, um, for dependence, lo dependence logic. And then I will introduce the majority quantifier, and also will um, give a um, reason why we uh, investigate this. And then, um, on the other hand side, on the second order side, we will uh, see the so-called uh, most quantifier um, and the counting hierarchy. And then, um, in the main result, we have shown in the paper that uh, second order logic with that most quantifier is equivalent to uh, dependence logic with that majority quantifier. And then I'll conclude. Okay, um, uh, the motivation for um, dependence logic is uh, characterizing the dependencies between uh, variables. So in first order logic, you see that um, dependencies of variables can only be expressed from, from left to right, so to speak. So here we can see that uh, uh, y2 depends on x2 and uh, x1 and everything that is before, but we cannot say that y2 is uh, uh, independent of uh, what is before um, so that it does only depend on x2. That's not possible here. So therefore, I have, uh, therefore, um, in 1961, Henkin introduced this uh, quantifier, uh, which is like a matrix. And uh, that means that uh, this y1 does depend on the x1 and the uh, y2 does depend on the x2, but the y1 does not depend on the x2, and the y2 does not depend on the x1. And uh, in 1989, uh, Hintika and Sandu um, introduced this uh, independence-friendly logic um, with that slashed quantifier here. Um, and that means that the y2 is independent of y1, uh, x1 and y1. And uh, here we explicitly say from which a variable is independent from. And then in 2007, um, Joko Venenen uh, introduced the dependence logic, um, where we have this new operator called dependence atom. And it's, um, it says that the x2 determines y2. So that means uh, y2 does only depend on x2. And here we explicitly say uh, that uh, where a variable is dependent from and not where it's independent from. OK, uh, first order logic extends ordinary. Um, sorry, dependence logic extends ordinary first order logic. And um, uh, dependencies have been studied in computer science. And they've gotten more and more important, and uh, for example, in database systems. And uh, yeah, with dependence logic, we can express dependencies explicitly, and this, this is what we uh, want. And um, we obtain uh, dependence logic just by adding this uh, dependence atom to first order logic. And uh, that means that um, we have a function from the vector t1 to tn minus 1, 2, tn. Yeah. The dependence atom here is satisfied if there is a, is a function from here, from the n minus 1 t's to tn. And um, it's known that uh, dependence logic is the same as existential second order logic. And in terms of complexity, it's um, captures the complexity class of NP. OK, the semantics of uh, dependence logic um, are based on the con concepts of teams. And the team is defined as follows. A team of this domain of the structure um, is a set of assignments. And an assignment is just uh, um, a function that maps for each variable a value. 
and uh, then we have uh, certain ways to to uh, extend those teams. So, for example, we have uh, for for an x from the domain and for a function, we define the extension where we add a column to the team. If you if you imagine a team as a tabular, then we add a column to the team and we map every um, assignment to a value, to a new value. And here we um, blow up the team, so we make copies of every assignment, and then we fill in in the new column that um, every uh, value from the domain. So I will present that in, a, in an example that makes it more clear. Um, we need those extensions um, for defining the existential and the universal quantifiers on, uh, on teams, on team semantics. Okay, then the dependence atom itself um, is defined as follows. Uh, it, um, on a structure A and a team X, it is satisfied if and only if for two assignments S and S prime when uh, the values of the first n minus 1 variables are equal in S and S prime, then it has to hold that the values of the nth variable has also be equal in S and S prime. Okay, here's an example for the dependence atom. This is a team. So um, these are the assignments. S1 is an assignment and S2 is an assignment. And here we can say, for example, um, it holds that x1 determines x2 because if we uh, check this by the semantics, then we'll see that uh, the values in S1 and S2 for x1 are not equal. So the values for x2 don't have to be equal. They, they are anyways, but they don't have to. And uh, we cannot say that um, x3 is dependent on x2 because um, here in x2 we see the, these uh, values are equal and in x3 it would follow from the semantics and in x3 they also would have to be uh, equal and they are not. And uh, yeah, here's the, here's the, the, um, the, the extension of the team where we add a column x4 and uh, we have a function that maps s1 to 2 and s2 to 1 and we just add this team that's meant by x extended by f to x4. Okay, uh, and the semantics then of the existential and the universal quantifier is um, defined in such a way that we say on a structure A and a team x, is, there exists an x phi is true if and only if um, for some functions, for some function, um, A models on the extended team that phi. So there's where this uh, existential quantifier is, uh, is used. So we say here there exists a function. And uh, the for all quantifier is um, just uh, defined very similar that we uh, say uh, A models um, models uh, for all x phi if and only if uh, it uh, models the um, phi on the blown up team where we set in every value from the domain. So there's this for all. Okay. Um, so here we have a formula and uh, as you can imagine this formula is always true because we can always find a value for, we can always find values for x4 such that it is true and um, yeah. We try to um, extend this T. And for example, we have to fill in here equal values because they have been equal, sorry, have, have been equal here. So they have, been, have to be equal here. And then this uh, formula is true. This is um, the existential quantifier. And for the universal quantifier, um, let's say that uh, we have a codomain of uh, 0, 1, and 2. And here we have to speak about, the, uh, about this A because um, we have to try every value from A. So I have to give it explicitly. Um, and then we blow up this team 
So um, you see that S1 prime, S1 prime prime, are just copies in the values of x1 to x3 of uh, the first one. And S2 prime and S2 prime prime are also copies in the first three values. And then in the fourth uh, column, I just uh, fill in every uh, possible value from the domain 0, 1, and 2. So that is the for all quantifier. OK. Um, then I'll introduce dependence logic with a majority quantifier. Um, and uh, the semantics of this majority quantifier is um, that we say for a model and a team, it holds that um, the majority of x satisfies phi of x if and only if for at least half of the possible functions going from x to a. It holds that the extension satisfies phi. So um, a to the x is the number of all possible functions from x to a. And we say here for at least half of them. So that means majority. And um, yes, uh, with, met with that m quantifier, we, um, we add the capability of counting to the logic. And counting is uh, something very interesting uh, in, in logic and in uh, computational complexity. And uh, yeah, since it's known that um, second order with that most quantifier is equivalent to the counting hierarchy, which I introduce later. Um, and it's known that um, dependence logic is the same as existential second order logic. Um, we can, or yeah, it's worth investigating whether um, this majority quantifier maybe raises the, the expressive power of dependence logic in a way such that it's equivalent to a second order most and uh, the counting hierarchy. Okay, the majority quantifier. Um, here we have a structure with a domain 0, 1, and 1, 2, 3, and uh, this team. And then we want to uh, investigate whether this uh, uh, formula holds or not. And um, yeah, intu intuitively, um, one would say it does hold, because um, you can imagine more uh, functions where uh, x3 is not equal to x2. But then we count the, n the number of all functions that we can extend the team with. And um, these are a to x, it's 64 functions. And then we count the number of uh, functions that extend the team in a way such that x2 is not equal to x3 is uh, satisfied. And here we have to, um, here we have to say that this is only satisfied if none of the values occurring then here in the, in the new column is equal to 0. So we have only three possible values that can extend here for satisfying x2 is not equal to x3. And then we have 3 to the 3, uh, so 27 functions um, that satisfy um, x2 is not equal to x3. And um, so this does not hold. And um, the point is that uh, the converse does not, does not hold either. So the, the, the law of excluded middle is not, uh, is not, uh, does not hold here. But it didn't hold on dependence logic. So why should it here? OK, and uh, on the second order logic side, we uh, define uh, the, the most k quantifier, where uh, we have a structure and uh, a domain. And uh, this most k quantifier binds a k relation symbol. And it's true if and only if we count the possibly uh, or the possible um, relations for uh, phi. And if at least half of them satisfy phi, then the most quantifier is satisfied. So uh, 2 to the n to the k is the number of all uh, possible 
um, relations, which I can apply here. And we say at least half of them have to satisfy phi. OK, um, the counting hierarchy. Um, that's the analog to the polynomial hierarchy. And um, as a building block, we don't use uh, NP, but we use PP. And um, the class PP consists of all those languages for which there is a P time Turing machine such that X is an L if and only if for more than half of the computation paths of N, they accept X. So here again, there's this more than half uh, hidden in it. And then the counting hierarchy is defined just like the polynomial hierarchy, um, where we have uh, C0 of P is just P. And then the kth level, or the k plus 1th level of P is uh, just PP to the kth level. And then the infinite union of all this is the counting hierarchy. And then um, the main result of our paper is um, that, we show, that we have shown that um, dependence logic with that majority quantifier is equal to second order with that most quantifier. And um, it is known that uh, um, this is then equal to the counting hierarchy. So we have also then shown that dependence logic with the majority quantifier is the same as the counting hierarchy. And the idea behind this is um, we do an intermediate step. We define a quantifier called most kf, which is um, similar to the most k quantifier, but it's uh, defined over functions. And then we show that they are equivalent, the logics most, uh, second order most and second order most f, because we can uh, see the, the relations uh, we, we have here. We can see the relations as uh, the, the pictures or the, the graphs of the functions for, from the, from, yeah, we apply here. OK, then we show that dm is uh, equivalent to most f. And uh, the proof is technical, and so I don't go uh, into detail here. OK, um, the quantifier most f is very analog, defined as uh, the most k quantifier. Again, we have a structure here. And then we say for most of the functions, uh, phi of g has to hold if and only if for at least half of them, half of the functions, they satisfy phi. So to n to the n to the k is uh, the number of all functions. And we say at least half of them have to satisfy phi. And uh, yeah, this is the proposition where we show that um, the logics are equivalent. And um, yeah, our main result here is split up into two parts, where we say for every dependence logic majority formula phi, there is a sentence psi of second order most f, such that they are equivalent, where we encode the team here as a relation for the second order side. And then uh, the converse uh, direction, where we say um, for every uh, phi of second order most, there is a sentence psi of dependence logic uh, with that majority quantifier such that they are equivalent. OK. Um, concluding, um, we can say that adding um, the majority quantifier increases the expressive power of uh, dependence logic. And uh, still, there are several open questions. Um, we have seen in the paper that dependence logic with, uh, uh, without dependence atoms is not flat. Flat means that um, everything that's true on singleton assignments is also true on the union of those singleton assignments. Um, and dependence logic with a majority quantifier but without those dependence atoms is also not flat. So that's the kind of uh, first order majority view, uh, so to speak. And uh, what about this expressive power? And then uh, do the open formulas of dependence logic with a majority quantifier uh, correspond to the downwards monotone properties of the counting hierarchy? Um, I, we thought about that because um, in dependence logic, it's the case that um, the downwards monotone properties, that the open formulas correspond to the downwards monotone properties of NP, which D is equivalent to. 
And uh, finally, but uh, I think this is the most interesting point, um, we have just defined one uh, specific uh, quantifier M. There, is, um, there are many, many ways to define other quantifiers, not by majority, but we can define those quantifiers in terms of uh, Lindström quantifiers. And um, what about extensions of D by other quantifiers? That's, uh, yeah, I think the most important point. Okay, then that's it. Thank you.